You're looking at Grumpig thinking, dude, this thing, this thing stinks. And well, actually, well, I mean, yeah, you'd, you'd pretty much be correct. But look, here's what we're gonna do. Grumpig gets the ability Gluttony, which allows it to consume a held berry at half health instead of the usual one fourth. So we can set up a nasty plot, doubling our special attack, get knocked down to around half health, and our hungry little piggy pops a salic berry, which now boosts our speed by plus one, and we're actually pretty quick doing our little march. So the move Belch is usually unusable nonsense, but if you've consumed a berry, we can actually use it as a 120 power poison move. After a nasty plot and a salic berry, Buddy's got some actually deadly burps that can be boosted even further by Terra Poison. We've got Psychic Noise for some Psychic Stab, along with Earth Power for good coverage, and we're gonna take this Belchin bad boy where no Grumpig has gone before. Look, sometimes you just have to pig out. I feel like a lot of people forget that Grumpig even exists, and Belch is such a ridiculous strategy with Gluttony that I had to bust this bad boy out. If you find yourself into that kind of thing, you should hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I've got a whole lot more shenanigans in the works. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with everybody's favorite bread dog, the freaking Dots Bun, and I have an Infernape. And not the greatest matchup for me, obviously, I don't want to hit this thing with a fire move and well-bake this man's body. Pause. But, I am here to mostly just set up some stealth rock, because for whatever reason this fire monkey can summon rocks to lay over there. So, I set up my stealth rock here, and I turn they do actually have the coverage in Psychic Fang, so that's not going to be able to straight up knock me out, but it does do a whole bunch of damage. And I cannot really touch this thing, so I decide to switch out here, and one fella that just takes attacks from literally everything all day long and barely feels it is... Freaking Rhydon. I got the Eevee Light Rhydon here who can take anything this wants to throw at me. And while I know the Dots Bun is a pretty defensive fella, this thing's mostly, it's built around trying to switch into fire moves, get some defensive boosts, and then potentially have some hard hitting body presses a lot of the time. It turns out they're actually going to have the Trailblaze as well, so that's going to be, it's going to be super effective. It's there for the speed boost, but for the most part, it again doesn't really hurt Rhydon on the physical side. So they decide now to just go for the body press here. It does bring me down to about half, which is fine. And luckily for me, after the Stone Edge damage, an Earthquake is going to be able to finish it off. So that takes care of the Loafer, and that feels pretty nice. So, at this point, they can switch into whatever they like. Now, Rhydon often finds itself in positions where revenge switch-ins are bad, because they can just go into a Water or a Grass-type. In this case, Sceptile comes in, and I actually I don't want to switch out here. I figure I either they go for something like a Swords Dance, which would be bad, or they just finish me off. And at this point, Rhydon as a sack is not the worst thing in the world for me, because... That's going to open the door for some bacon, and honestly, there's never a bad time for some bacon, so as I bring in the Grumpig here, the plan is this. I know that I should be able to take not only at least one attack from this thing, but it also should be able to knock me down into my berry range. So, as they do actually end up having the coverage with x Scissor, Grumpig's thick ass says, hey, that's actually fine. It is going to knock me down into Salic Berry range, which is perfect, because now at plus one speed and just full max speed investment, I am schmoovin'. We're out here marching around. And it doesn't, you don't look quick, but I'm telling you, this thing gets going. So I also now have a nasty plot. So I'm sitting at plus two special attack, plus one speed, and now it's time to start burping. I can fire off the super effective belch after the salic, and that breath is just straight up enough to kill the thing. So <laughs> down goes the septile, which is great. And now as they decide to go into the Alolan Raichu, this is a pancake loving fella that is pretty quick, but... At plus one speed, guess what? Not only are we going to be able to be faster, but I also have the coverage with the Earth Power, which not a lot of people remember that this thing even gets access to. It's there for uh, kind of steel defensive coverage, but it still works out, takes care of the Raichu, and outspeeding that thing in general is just hilarious. Now, as they bring in Charizard, first of all, Stealth Rock just does half the work for me, and also, while Psychic Noise would just kill this thing, I'm here to click Belch, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We do outspeed No Choice Scarf on the Zard, and the Belch is able to finish it. Now, risky maneuver, because first of all, they make Belch so ridiculous to even get off. Not only that, but also it has a 10% chance to miss, and I just wanted to kill stuff with Belch, and that's what we're doing. Now, as they bring in Annihilate, of course, I do actually just have the straight-up stab coverage with the Psychic Noise, and after a nasty plot, look, you do not want to deal with the Grumpig here. This thing, it, it, it actually <laughs> it does better uh, than you'd expect. You know, with that base 90 after a nasty plot. So that's going to take care of the Annihilate. Now the final Mon is going to be the Feraligator. The good news is, if they had the priority in the form of Aqua Jet, they would have used it already. So now, we're going to try to let Grumpig finish off the full body bag, which never ever happens, but we're out here. Listen, I'm going to go for that Terra Poison, because I want to just boost up Belch as much as possible, just to ensure 
Uh, that there's no there's no nonsense around here with this with this gator. So we put the skull and crossbones. We're looking like a badass freaking I don't know pirate pig coming for that booty. So I can I do connect on the belts. We got that stab boost, and that takes care of the gator with a crit, which I don't believe mattered after the stab. It should have been able to finish off anyway. And that the that was actually kind of nuts. The conditions really just lined themselves lined up to where Grump Pig somehow made it happen, and it is not always like that. And so that is going to bring us into game number two, because we after the body bag, we're keeping it going. So first of all, my opponent in this one is working with a pretty interesting and honestly creative looking squad with some big threats. So let's jump into it. All right, so this time my dude's gonna go ahead and lead off with the cleaver. Kind of to be expected, of course, this fella just comes in and clicks stone axe, get some damage and some rocks up. But as I lead off with the Infernape here, I know that I can take at least one stone axe from this thing. And I do want to prioritize getting up that stealth rock. Uh, I also, I figure if it's Choice Scarf, we'll be able to see if it's going to move first. Turns out we are actually going to be faster. So, that tells me this thing is not going to be Scarf, and uh, at least good to know. So, a little, little bit of intel, they do connect on the Stone Axe. Does do a whole buttload of damage, and also it sets up the rocks on my side. Now, at this point, I know that I'm going to be able to outspeed, and since this thing didn't reveal a Choice Scarf, I imagine maybe they go for something like a U-turn here. Um, but I just want to get some guaranteed damage on the guy, because honestly, Cleaver... It can be pretty thick and annoying to kill anyway. So close combat does connect um, and after some life orb, we're not looking super healthy, but they do just finish us off now with an aerial ace and down goes the Infernape. So in certain situations, sacrificing the lead like this is actually kind of beneficial because now I can actually decide to go into whatever I want and try to get something going. Now it turns out Grumpig actually looks pretty good against their team. So what I want to do here is I can kind of entice this cleaver to go for something like an X scissor. Now, I know that obviously my psychic type ass is going to get sliced up into some thick cut bacon if I, you know, don't Terra. So I'm going to bust out the poison Terra early here. Works well defensively versus the bug. And I know that it should still be able to knock me down into at least half health to get my Salic Berry, which is entirely necessary for this plan to work out. So as we go full crystallized poison on their ass, it turns out I do actually outspeed. That's because I am timid max speed nature with a base 80. Uh, it turns out with Cle this cleaver revealed to be basically adamant, which is fine because that gives it just enough power at least to knock me down to just below half. That is then going to activate the Salic Berry, and now, boom, we're fully set up here, and we're Terrad, ready for some action. So at this point, I decide to go for the Psychic Noise, just because I want to guarantee that I can at least land a hit there and knock out the cleaver, which is always great. So down goes the sharpest boy, and now we get to see what we can make happen here with the Grump Pig. So at this point, their check is going to be Metagross, which obviously is pretty solid. First of all, they have the option for a Bullet Punch, but also they just resist both of my stabs at this point. But one of Grump Pig's pure superpowers is that nobody knows what this thing does. So I actually, as they don't go for priority, I can finish it straight up with a freaking Earth Power, and that is extremely satisfying. So down goes the big old Steel type. Now at this point, they're gonna bring in Cramorant. This Ho-Oh is looking a little weird, got some Cheeto dust on him, but I've realized that now my best damage is just gonna straight up be the belt. So after some Stealth Rock Chip, I'm actually feeling pretty confident that this should be able to take it out. I'm gonna go ahead and fire off the burp, and <laughs> that is gonna kill the Cramorant. So for, people are probably like, what the hell is this thing's deal? So, <laughs> which is the best thing ever. Now, as they decide to bring in Ninetales, first of all, I'm thinking, okay, it didn't take as much Stealth Rock as you'd imagine. Also, we do not see Drought, so, that leads me to believe this is, in fact, going to be the Hisuian Zorark. And as I'm looking at kind of damage versus a Zorark, I realize Belch is just, even though it's resisted, after a nasty plot, most Zorark just straight up die here, especially after Stealth Rock. So, as I fire off the Belch, it turns out it is actually going to live, which is honestly confusing to me, because I'm fairly certain that, I mean, most Zoraks are going to just be running max speed and special attack investment, and that makes me feel like this thing had HP or something along the lines of that. He lives it. I didn't expect it to live. I sh probably should have just gone for the stab psychic noise there, but listen, I, I, I like to click the belch and I thought I saw a kill there, and it actually is not. So, weirdly, like max HP invested freaking Hisuian Zorark is going to flip the script a little bit. So, at this point, the good thing is we've, we've busted a pretty solid hole in the squad, at least with the Grump Pig here. So, I actually, the late game boy is ready to do some damage. So, I'm going to bring in the Iron Jugulus here. I know that I can outspeed, especially after. Uh, a nice little booster energy, and a Dark Pulse is going to finish off uh, the ghostly little fella. So that thing kind of threw a wrench in the plans a little bit, but at this point also, once again, I honestly, I have a great matchup kind of versus 
uh, the two mons they have left. First of all, it's going to be the actual Ninetales. And then they also have the Sarah Ledge in the back. So this thing is going to set up the Drought, which is going to be able to boost a Flamethrower, which I actually still am able to take one guaranteed. So as I go for the Dark Pulse, I know it's not quite going to be enough to kill, but I also know that I can take an attack from this thing. As it turns out, they actually go for the Fake Tears, which is going to harshly drop my Spadef, but once again, I'm faster and I can just fire off another Pulse. And the Fake Tears, Ninetales is actually kind of kind of wild. So. Luckily for us, the Dark Pulse finishes it off, and at this point, the final mon being the Sarah Ledge, um, as long as there's no crazy nonsense in the back, we should relatively be safe. So, one thing to note, they have not used their Terra at this point, so I'm fully expecting the defensive Terra, um, but uh, more than likely, I should at least still be able to take an attack from this thing with the Jugulus anyway. So, I just go for the Dark Pulse, it's just going to be my highest damage output, uh, but they are actually going to end up busting out the the little, little late-game Terra action. It is going to end up being the Terra Fire just to lose that Ghost Typing so that I no longer uh, have the super effective Dark Pulse, which it should be fine because without like a Swords Dance or anything, I, it's not going to be able to do too much to me. So I get the Dark Pulse off, but not only that, I also get the Flinch, which is just rude. And uh, sometimes you got to do it to him. So that is essentially going to be the end of the match there. I thought that was just kind of a, a fun dynamic. And anytime I can get Grumpig to click Belch, we, we call that a dub. So <laughs> that's going to be the end. Uh, of that game, but we we are gonna keep it rolling. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, make sure to hit that like button if you stuck around this far for sure, because we're gonna go ahead and just straight up get into the next one because we're having a good time. Now you're gonna probably be surprised to hear this, but here's the game plan with this one. We're gonna try to get in Grumpig and we're gonna try to belch on some stuff and that's pretty much it. So they actually end up leading off with the Zation as I have the Infernape it is not the greatest news, but I decided to roll the dice here because knowing that uh, if they go for the Sacred Sword, I actually, I guarantee I live it. And if they click Close Combat, I die, but I just decide to click the Overheat. It turns out to work in my favor because I, as they go for that Sacred Sword, I just barely hang on, which is amazing. And then I just knock the fool out with an Overheat because my mixtape is fire and I'm a mixed attacking Infernape. So, at this point now, they have the Revenge Switch. They decide to bring in Scizor, who obviously is about allergic as hell to fire, but of course, I know I'm about to be bullet punched. And rather than switch, and I'm actually just going to stay and go for that mock Punch just to get a little bit of damage on it, as uh, now they can just go ahead and bullet punch the air and look foolish in the process. How does that feel, Mr. Mr. Big Meaty Claws? Probably feeling real foolish about now. So, with Infernape gone, I can now switch into whatever I like. I decide, you know who, Toxtricity actually has a pretty solid matchup here in terms of, you know, I resist both of this thing's stabs, and I can start to set up. And you already know the deal with this, uh, <laughs> this Toxtricity. I'm working with a Shift Gear Technician Physical Set, which is wild. If you haven't seen the Toxicity video yet, you should go check it out. So, they actually stay in. First of all, they go for the Bullet Punch. I assumed it was just to, just to like, break my, uh, my air balloon, which, and it does. It ruins my birthday party, but it doesn't do enough damage to where I feel like this thing is Choice Banded. Now, I, I figure after a Shift Gear, I'm actually in a pretty good spot here to be in, like, a two-hit KO range from a Thief. I know this thing can't really hit me, I imagine they probably switch, but they actually, they stay in and go for another bullet punch, which is slowly actually getting me into a spot where I'm not looking super great, and as I actually go for the thief with my air balloon popped, I steal their item, turns out to be the metronome, which is gonna, it increases damage when you use the same move continuously, so that next bullet punch is actually getting kind of crazy, and uh, they just decide they're just gonna continue the, the bullet punch train. Does get me into range where now I am not extremely healthy, and as I finish it with another thief, I already have their item, but actually I can try to make use of this metronome, meaning if I continually use Thief, I actually just start to rack up pretty good damage, and that is why we love the freaking Thief Toxicity. So, first of all, as they bring in Meowstic, I imagine they probably go for a defensive Terra here, knowing that I'm just going for Thief. They actually do not, and they, it turns out they barely actually live, which is kind of surprising. I expected that to kill after a plus one in Technician, in, in like the, the small metronome boost I had, but it lives, and then just kills me off with a Psychic, and I'm like, well, damn. So, look, if it's not going to be Toxtricity's day, at least I have a great spot here to bring in Grumpig. That's basically any time I can bring myself in, especially against a special attacker, uh, I know I can take a hit and just, most of the time, you get knocked down into that gluttony range. So, sadly for me, they actually go for the Thunder Wave, which is definitely, it's going to slow down my little march, which is sad, but also it's going to make it so even after a Salic Berry, I'll just brought, be brought back to my normal speed. Which, we're gonna still, if we can, still try to see if we can get it going. So, I go for that nasty plot, get, immediately double my special attack, which is great. And now they are just actually gonna fire off a Psychic. I was figuring maybe they had some coverage in something like a Shadow Ball. 
They do not, however, and they probably just kind of wanted to wait to let this thing be sacked off so they can bring in something else. And now they're just in here just continually just having to click Psychic probably as their only coverage. Um, and I do actually connect on a Psychic Noise at this point. So the bad news is I did not get hit down to my Psychic range, so I'm still about slow as hell out here. But I do actually still have a nice little nasty plot, so I'm still I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Now, as they bring in the Vicka Volts, this thing is either a Sticky Web support one, or it's going to be something that's just here you know, for some Bug Buzz damage. So I imagine a Bug Buzz is coming here, and I also realize if I go for the Terra Poison, I can resist that. It should allow me to be able to live it. Then get a Salic Berry, and then boom, we can start belching on some fools and doing some total bullshit. So, I actually, it turns out I outspeed even through the Para, which is because that reveals this thing does not have any speed investment, because I'm, I'm fully max speed on this thing, and even through the Para, I'm faster than this slow-ass Vigavolt. Now, they do go for that Bug Buzz, which is amazing. It does knock me down right into Gluttony Range. And while we were faster than this thing originally, I at least am going to be, have the option to be quicker than some stuff now. So... First of all, I need to not get fully parried here, and it will totally ruin my day. Luckily, we break through it because Grumpig is the damn goat, and a Psychic Noise is going to finish off uh, the Vicavolt here, which is amazing. Also, I know that there's no game audio in this one. For some reason, the audio just didn't record in, in terms of the, like, the sounds from the moves and stuff. I don't know. It's annoying. But as they bring in this Firewater Donut, here's the thing. I actually outspeed because Grumpig had the Salic Berry, which is fantastic not only that but i now have a stab freaking belch which is <laughs> is gonna take care of the volcanian i pop its balloon with my horrible breath and that is actually hilarious so extremely satisfying being paralyzed and still breaking through allowing us to outspeed with the salic and the belch knocking it out with the freaking terra boost sadly now they can actually bring in the monkey that has udders for hands and this thing is definitely quicker because this monkey gets zoom in so a triple axle actually is gonna take me out and the coverage in Triple Axle is kind of bad news. Now, first of all, I imagine they probably would have gone for something other than risking the Triple Axle to take care of the Grumpig. And as I have three Mons left that don't really enjoy Ice, I am really kind of hoping this thing is not Choice Banded. So, that is kind of the thought process here. At least, first of all, I can go into the Jugulus, who is going to be faster, especially after that Booster Energy. And while I know a Dark Pulse isn't going to be able to kill, I'm thinking I should be able to take a non-stab Triple Axle, right? Let's see. So... I go for that Dark Pulse, a critical hit actually knocks it down to literally 1 HP, which is actually insane. Not only that, but the Triple Axle is going to be enough to kill the Jugulus after that third hit. So that leads me to believe this thing is definitely Choice Banded, and I found myself in a spot against the late game Monkey that just freaking dodged death by a freaking inch, and also now just has Choice Banded Triple Axles buddies firing off. So my best bet is going to be Rhydon being able to take one, because this thing's Eviolite, and we are rock damn solid and uh, as they are able to just get off a triple axle the first one gets a crit which is not the site you want to see but after that second one we know that surely I, I should be able to live that third one and we do because Rhydon never lets you down when it comes to uh, taking physical attacks so that is thank god this choice banded Ampapom is not something you expect but honestly it's a freaking threat so an earthquake is going to be able to finish it off that is uh, going to be the end of the match and that Ampapom was scary so listen here's the thing I do have one more bonus match for you because, you know, why the hell not? I don't usually throw four in, but we're going to try to get a little, little more action for the pig. And let's get into it. So this time my opponent is going to end up leading off with the Lycanroc as to be expected. And once again, we just have the mixtape out here. This thing, it, it, I love me some lead Infernape. So we're basically a couple of fellas that are here to kind of just set up our stealth rock. As I imagine that's what they're going to do. It's, of course, what I'm going to do. I just go ahead and I don't know, again, where the rocks come from from this damn monkey. But somehow we summon the rocks. And uh, that's exactly what they're going to do as well. And now this place is about rocky as shit. So, obviously, I have the great matchup here in terms of close combat doing a lot to basically everything they've got. So, I decided to just click that close combat. Turns out they are going to stay in. And luckily, no Focus Sash is just going to straight up take care of the, the crazy wolf. And uh, that's a pretty solid way to start. We got the rocks up. We took care of the lead. At this point, now they can bring in whatever they like. So they're actually going to end up going into everybody's favorite marshmallow, the friggin' Wigglytuff. Now, I don't necessarily have much to do to this thing, so I figure I actually have a pretty solid opportunity to try, try to get the Toxtricity going versus this. I also... And I don't know what this thing wants to do to me. I'm thinking maybe there's a Thunder Wave coming, in which case I'm in an even better spot with the Toxicity here. So, 
I'm having a nice little time suspended in the air with my air balloon. As it turns out, they're going to go for the reflect. So that leads me to believe this is most, most likely going to be like a dual screens kind of light clay fella. And I have a pretty good spot here to try to start setting up some shift gear. Now, uh, as I actually go for that shift gear, they're going to end up busting out the Terra, which means it's more than likely going to be a steel Terra, as uh, that's exactly what it's going to be. Your buddy busts out the freaking axe on the Wiggly Tuff's head, looking pretty out of place out here, but that's going to stop me from being able to get off a of Poison Tail. Um, but again, after a shift gear, I know that I'm pretty safe defensively versus this, and I can kind of set up as much as necessary. The bad thing is with that reflect up, my physical damage is already not great on this thing and now it's just going to be even worse. So they do have uh, both the reflect and the light screen up and I'm just like, you know what, I have no reason not to shift gear again. So I'm just going to continually shift these damn gears and we're, out, we're, we're in second gear at this point. So I have now doubled my attack and I'm at plus four speed. So we're actually looking pretty nice here, but it turns out, look, they go for the freaking chilling water, which Against any other toxicity literally in the damn world doesn't matter because most of the time I'm supposed to be a, spe a special attacker and they're probably just doing it for the chip and it ends up uh, being really bad for me because now I'm just at plus one attack as I go for the thief especially behind the reflect and the, it just not even it, it, it's not doing much but I at least do take the light clay from it which honestly is pretty solid for me just because now I don't have to worry about if they do set back up some screens not going to stick around for as long. And now the game plan has changed a little bit in terms of now being like, I'm just going to stay in here and try to waste these screen turns because, uh, look, my team offensively needs all the help it can get. And behind the screens, it's going to struggle a little bit in, in terms of damage output. So I'm just going for some Thunder Punch, which actually turns out to be Thunder Kick because for some reason Toxicity doesn't freaking punch. But uh, it's just my highest damage output. Bad thing about this set is even through with Technician, you would think that it would have some type of electric damage that would work for it. Spark is 65 power, so Thunder Punch is <laughs> it's past the bed. But I realize I'm probably not getting anywhere super quick with the Toxicity, so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna bring in the March and Bacon just right away, because as I know they're going for Draining Kisses, I figured maybe two of them would put them in a spot to where I could get to Gluttony, and that's, uh, as that's always kind of the goal. I, I always try to get to that Gluttony spot so then I can belch on some stuff, but Wigglytuff, for the most part, can't draining kiss its way out of a wet paper bag. So at least the good thing is about this Wigglytuff is it's honestly really good setup fodder. I decide now I'm going to try something a little different. I go for the nasty plot, and that next draining kiss is not quite going to put me in range to get that Salic Berry to activate. But I'm like, surely that's fine. As the reflect is going away, light screen has one more turn. I'm just going to go for another nasty plot. We're about to be fully, fuck fully plotted out here, just thinking the nastiest piggly shit you can imagine you do not even want to live a second in the mind of this grumpy so they actually decide to swap into the azumarill here as i go for another nasty plot we are out here looking like a, if there's if a pig has ever been a nuke before this is the freaking pig so light screen goes away which is great and at this point i decide there's one way this thing can kind of homey and that is if it is like an assault vested azumarill that can take an attack and then get off something like a knockoff which would be bad so i i decide at this point, Grumpig is like honestly looking like a really good win con for me, but I'm gonna bust out the Poison Terra just to lose that dark, uh, super effective hit, just in case. I do outspeed, of course, because the is slow as hell, and a Psychic Noise with all them boosts is definitely gonna be able to take care of it. So, a Zoomeral down, and here's the funny part. Sometimes Grumpig feels quicker than you think, because as they're able to go into the Golduck here, uh, if this thing is modest, I actually just straight up outspeed this thing as well. It turns out it is not going to be rocking uh, the plus speed nature. A Psychic Noise is going to take care of the Golduck. And they have a very slow team, barring uh, obviously the Lycanroc, and then they're, they have a Noivern in the back. So, first they're actually going to go ahead and bust out the, the big old whale. So, generally, so Titan is a pretty thick fella that can take attacks all day long. However, Grumpig has gotten a bit out of control with the nasty plots. And yeah, a, a Psychic Noise is just going to straight up just obliterate the thing. So Blubber is all over the damn place. I always like to imagine that Grumpig's Psychic Noise just is just like a crazy oink. Just firing off just his loudest oink yet. So now as they bring in Wigglytuff, they probably think the Steel-type has a decent shot defensively. But I can just Earth Power it and that is going to take care of the Wigglytuff. And we're really seeing the benefit of slow team action. Now... They do, of course, have the one only fast fella on the squad, the, the Noivern left. And as this thing comes in, one of the good things I at least have on my side is my base 110 special defense. We can Grumpig, for whatever reason, be kind of nice on the special side and check this out. As they go for the Boom Burst, I live it with 20 HP, which is amazing <laughs> because they're going to do... Uh, it does give me my Salic Berry, which 
you know, is a bit too late. However, I at least was able to eat the berry. It is going to give them the throat spray after going for that boot burst. Um, but it just was not quite enough damage because we thick as hell. And a psychic noise is going to kill the uh, the crazy freaking Noivern. So, that was, uh, that was, that was ridiculous. I don't know. This Grumpig has truly gone where no Grumpig has gone before. And I thought that one was especially funny just because I didn't even get to click Belch because I hadn't been able to consume my damn berry. But uh, Grumpig should demands respect and uh, this thing is super funny. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Peace out.